Hello, and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Thursday, November the 19th of 2020. This evening, our prayer resources are coming from the PCUSA's Book of Common Worship Daily Prayer. God will come, and there shall be continuous day, for at evening time there shall be light. God is light. In God, there is no darkness at all. Let us pray. To you, O God, we give up the burdens of this day, trusting your love and mercy. To you, O God, we surrender ourselves, trusting our risen Lord to lead us always in the way of peace, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our first scripture reading tonight is from Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 20. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intend to harm me, intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. And from Esther chapter 4, verses 9 through 17. Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, All the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But thirty days have passed since I was called to go to the king. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, that you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa, and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. And from John 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me any more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. This evening I have a brief reflection to share with you from the Ragamuffin Bible. Trust. 
This is a reflection on Esther chapter 4. The predominant question for every Jew was how to bring on the reign of Israel's God. Jesus proposed a single way, the way of trust. Jesus did not ask his disciples to trust in God. He told them to trust in God. Trusting in God was not some feature out on the edges of Jesus' teaching. It was its heart and, con and center. This and only this would hasten the reign of God. We presume, however, that trust will ease confusion, dull the pain, redeem the times. The cloud of witnesses in Hebrews 11 testifies that this is not so. Our trust does not bring final clarity on this earth. It does not still the chaos or dull the pain or provide a crutch. When all else is unclear, the heart of trust says, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Let us pray. We give you our praise and thanks, O God, for all gifts of love we have received from you and for your persistent mercy in Jesus Christ. Especially, we thank you for work we have accomplished pleasing to you. For the faithful witness of Christian people. For the example of righteousness we see in those who lead with integrity, teach with wisdom, care with compassion, and give with generosity. And we thank you for all works of Christian compassion. We give you our cares and concerns, O God, because we know you are kind and care for your children in every circumstance. Especially, we pray, for those who struggle with doubt and despair. For people afflicted with disease. For those who grieve who feel alone or feel helpless. For those who are called to special ministries, for people neglected or abused, for people living in places ravaged by war and civil unrest. And we pray for the church, our own congregation, the presbytery, the Presbyterian Church in Canada, and the whole church throughout the world. Lord, hear our prayers. Be with us as we trust you to hear and respond. And care for your world, healing its brokenness, repairing its divisions. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the Lord, who is our peace, give us peace at all times and in every way. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Amen. Good night.